On a previous episode of Paint Society, we focused our attention on dialing in the proper color for our Project Honda Civic Type R. We did a spray out card and checked the color against the vehicle only to really find out that it was a better variant that matched much better. Once the fender was all painted and mounted up back to the vehicle, we started the prepping process. We first started off with cleaning with a very good degreaser. We then showed you the K grit. We're using the K600, K800, and how to sand down a car prior to paint. Now once everything was nice and sanded down, it was then ready for the painting process. And that's exactly where this episode picks up right now. Welcome back to Paint Society. Now in this episode, part three of the series, it's paint day. And that's right, we're gonna be blending our fender into our hood, into our door, and into our A pillar. Let me show you exactly what we got going on before we get started. Taking a look at our tape job, we have everything nicely, cleanly masked up to get the best type of paint job possible. Masking is so important. A clean, tight masking job with no flapping plastic is gonna mean a better chance of getting a nice, clean paint job. Now you can see here our fender is just a touch lighter, but we mentioned in the previous video we found a better variant to use on this fender for blending purposes. Now let's talk about cleaning. Now from this point on, we should be having gloves on. We don't want any of our oils from our hands contaminating the surface. Now there's two types of cleaners we'll be using. The first is a water-based cleaner. Now this water-based cleaner is gonna remove oils from our fingers, maybe sweat if we dropped it into the paint job. And that's what we're gonna use first, a water-based cleaner, and then we're gonna be using a solvent-based. A solvent-based cleaner is gonna take off oil and grease, stuff that's more mechanical, and we'll use this last. Now to clean, we have two options. We have a premium wash and dry cloth, which is lint-free, or we have a microfiber. Now I prefer a microfiber just because it picks up more debris from the surface and it lasts a lot longer than a towel. Now for our water-based cleaner, we put it into a pump sprayer and I really, really, really saturate the panel. I wanna make sure that I'm bringing up all the contaminants. Now, if you look closely, sometimes you can even see little fingerprints right? You kind of see this going around it. It's a good indication, right? That you could have some possible contamination. I like to wipe in one direction as best as possible. Now, if you have to go the other way, it's not a huge deal, but you don't want to be smearing, okay, your contaminants all over the place. So try to wipe in one direction the best as possible. Now, using these microfiber cloths, I use them for about two or three jobs and then I'll throw them in a wash with some greaser and they are good to go. So I will suggest washing them every so often or every three or four jobs. Now moving along to the fender, I'll do the same thing. I'll apply it and then wipe it off. Now you're seeing me just do this really one time, but off camera what I'll do is I'll come back again, right? And I'll do it one more time in case I missed anything. It's always good to have just a second pass. You can never clean too much, I'm telling you guys. Think about it, this is your last chance to get rid of any sort of fish eye contamination. Now, two ways you can get fish eyes. One is from, you know, a dirty filter or a not a good enough filter catching the oil or contaminants in the airline. But I feel most fish eyes come from the surface. I'm gonna be honest with you. Most fish eyes are already there. You're just not doing a good enough job of cleaning, right? Now watch, you're gonna catch me doing it again. I'm gonna put it right back on. You can never do it too much. I've already said that three or four times, right? So this, once again, let's say you just went to KFC or got some uh, grease on your fingers, oils on your fingers. This is what this cleaner removes. You can also use spray away glass cleaner if you wanna get a cheaper alternative. You don't wanna use anything with Windex that has added scents or anything like that. Those fragrance, fragrances are going to sometimes leave the fish eye or contamination, a residue on the surface. Now this is that solvent cleaner. Now this one will look like the car has just been painted, all right? And I like this one because you can really, really get it on there and clean it off and it evaporates quicker. And you need to use this. Let's say this car was worked on previously by the uh, mechanic or maybe the, even the owner and their greasy hands were all over the hood. 
Well, this once again is going to help eliminate and remove all those contamination issues you have. And a important note is you don't want to allow it to dry on the surface. You want to get it all off before it dries because even so you can leave a film on the surface if you allow this cleaner to dry. And this is also a great time. Look over the panel as you're doing this. Check to see, hey, do I have any tape that maybe went over onto the paint or do I have any loose ends or do I have an area that maybe needs to be sanded a little bit more? So as I'm cleaning, what I'm doing is I'm visually checking the car, right? I'm always looking at my work because, you know, there's been a lot of work done to this car to get to this point and we don't want to overlook the smallest detail that can prevent us from really doing a stand-up OEM job. And that's what we're after. We're trying to get the best possible finish and it, a lot of it is just really in the prep, all right? The paint con is just the, the last step, all right? The paint con just really just only shows you how well your work has been up to this point. I say that's about good. We're ready to start getting some paint mixed up. Well, we already have it mixed up. We're ready to start spraying it. Another item not needed but really helps out, it's a static neutralizer gun. And this is gonna help eliminate any static around the car, maybe hanging onto the plastic. So I'll go over it with my tack rag first and then I'll follow it with the static uh, neutralizer gun to, illuminate and, to eliminate any static. Because this could cause it, but then when we follow it up with this, it'll eliminate it. Now for this, I'm gonna use a Walcom HDE base gun. I run it around 20 PSI. I'm just gonna put paint on the fender first and then leave it. See how simple it was? We just put it on the fender and wherever the rest of the paint landed, we let it land. We don't wanna go beyond this body line. We wanna keep it contained. Now, the fender's still just a touch light because blue is very transparent and it's gonna need two or three coats, but I can tell it's the right shade. So let us flash off for about another five minutes, 10 total minutes of flash time, and then we'll hit it up with our second coat. Ready for the second coat. First coat's all flashed off. You can see it's nice and dull. The second coat will take a little bit further right into this area and will still stay right around this body line. Observe the second coat. You can see where it's still wet, right where we wanted it to land, and it came around this area. Now, I'm gonna allow this to dry, then we're gonna take a closer look to see how is our coverage looking so far. We can use a sun gun for that. We're gonna check coverage with the lights off. Now, there's two options. We can use a 3M sun gun or the Astro. Now, the Astro is also a very cheap alternative that works really, really good. So we're gonna check to make sure that we don't have any areas that are light that we missed and checking basically how is our blend looking, okay? It looks really good. So at this point, what we can do is I wanna throw a one, one last coat that's over reduced. That's gonna really help with my metallics on this because it's got some metallic in it and I want my metallics to kinda just ease into the rest of the paint and not stand up. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So to do that, I'm gonna take my original mix and I have a little bit left, I would say maybe an ounce and a half. And I'm gonna just add some extra slow reducer. So extra, extra slow reducer. And that's gonna help thin it out, make it more translucent. I'm probably gonna add about maybe, uh, I would say that's about 20% of the whole mix. So right now I've taken that color and I've actually made the strength less it's lost its strength but by losing its strength what's going to happen now is it's going to be able to blend out better on those edges or it's not going to be so abrupt i'm going to show you a little bit of a better blending technique as well on this third coat you're going to observe me blending but i'm going to be blending more across the panel see we're going to be able to see an abrupt edge right here so if we take our blend on our door because we're really only going to see the difference on our door all right we're gonna take it this way and that's gonna help really disperse 
the blend evenly and take your eye away from just a sudden abrupt line or a halo in the middle of the door. And that's just it. No fancy drop coats. We leave it just like that. With a gun just like this, every single coat is like a drop coat. It just really disperses it evenly, nice and beautiful. Let's allow this good 20 minutes to dry before we hit it up with clear. After 20 minutes, it's all flashed here in the booth. If you don't have a booth, wait a little bit longer. You don't want any of the solvents to get trapped. You can see that blend looks really good. So I don't like to tack too much. I limit my contact with the actual panel itself. So what I'm going to do now at this point is I'm gonna give it one tack before clear, but I don't like to tack in between coats. You wanna make sure it's absolutely dry. Now, when you run your tack rag over the panel, it should be smooth, and that's exactly what we have here. So smoothest is an indication that your blend is gonna be nice and flawless and undetectable because that hard edge really is what is gonna show if, well, you have a bad blend. And that hard edge is actually what we call a halo, okay? And we don't want any sorts of halo in any type of our paintwork. And that is the minimal overspray we have from those three coats, that is all. So that's a good indication of a smooth finish. Since we tacked it, we'll go over it. At this point, I'm ready for clear. Let me show you a little bit where I start, where I end, and well, what do I do when I paint? So I'm gonna start here at the bottom of the door and I'm gonna bring my paint all the way up to the front and across the hood. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy with that first coat, I'm just gonna get it on. So then we'll bring our clear all the way over. Remember, this is just clear on clear, so any original damage that was on the vehicle will get cleared over. That is how it works when we're doing blends and insurance work, okay? So if we were to fix any damage over on this edge, then we'd have to paint the fender and and there's any damage like a dent on this fender you'd have to paint the door so we only do exactly what the estimate states unless the customer wants any differently they'll have to pay that extra amount so we are ready to clear i'm going to be using the walcom 1.2 hte clear gun let's get rolling All right, in real time after that first coat, man, that thing just laid on there. Super nice. God, look at that. That looks really, really, really good. Really happy with it. Now, what do we want to do? We want to allow this to really flash. You know, it is not too hot tonight. Uh, I am using a slow reducer, but we don't want to run the paint, so we want to allow this to set up for a good 10 minutes. All right, we waited about a good 15 minutes, actually. Gave a little bit extra time. We're ready to strap up, I'll pop you on my head, and let's get clearing that second coat.
And after that second coat, man, it looks stunning. I gotta say, really nice, wet, beautiful OEM texture finish. Only a couple pieces of dirt to nib out, but wow, really, really, really good finish following the steps that we discussed on how to get that nice blend and how to lay down that beautiful coat of clear. We're gonna allow this to dry overnight. We'll come back in the morning and we'll check it out. Uh, next morning we're here and it's still looking just as beautiful. It really retain that gloss is what we really want. So what we'll do at this point is I'll unmask it. We'll take a little bit of a further look. And after the unmask, you can see our color match right here is exactly the same from before because those are the same colors. Now, our blended area, we have a much better color option than we did originally. And you could tell that, well, that looks spot on from our blend into the hood, our blend into the door, and our blend into the A pillar. And while the car is all painted, now it's best to paint all the parts together, like the bumper, we should have painted with the actual car, but we were actually waiting on our sealer, which was on back order, and it just came in. So now we can show you how to get it all prepped up and get that painted. We just finished spraying that bumper cover and it looks really, really good and it's ready to match the rest of the panels that we painted in this episode. Now stay tuned because we have one more episode in this series. It's gonna be the buffing and the assembly. We're gonna show you how to remove those little tiny dust nibs or imperfections as well as getting a car back to OEM spec. If you guys wanna support the channel, head over to paintsocietystore.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Instagram. We have a lot of great tech tip posts along the way that might help you out. That's paint.society. In the meantime, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.